And as we've talked about, high school water polo in full swing around the country. It started in some states right here in California. It's about to begin. And with that in mind, we're talking with Dan Albano. You know him from the Orange County Register. You can follow him on Twitter at OC Varsity Guy. Dan covers boys and girls water polo. We're talking boys water polo. Dan, thanks for taking some time today. It's great to be with you again, Greg. Thanks a lot. Dan, uh, let's dive right in here, pardon the pun, but we're talking boys' water polo. When you think Orange County, Southern California, the L.A. area, it seems to come down to Harvard, Westlake, and modern day year after year. Are those the, the teams to beat in Division One again? I believe so. You know, they had the big, biggest uh, high school tournament over the summer, Greg, was, you know, the California uh, State High School Championships, and those were the two finalists. Modern day actually um, got the victory. Uh, over uh, Harvard Westlake, Harvard they played really well. They've uh, kind of reloaded this year, um, but Harvard's going to be right there. You know, Ben Halleck, uh, you know, national team center is a big part of what happens when these guys hook up. But I think those are the clear favorites. Uh, you got to keep an eye on, uh, you know, a uh, growing power at Orange Lutheran. I think Loyola of Los Angeles is going to be pretty good. Uh, they, you know, they've been very strong for the last couple of years. And, you know, Huntington Beach is on the rise. They made the semifinals last year. But those three teams, we can probably, you know, throw, uh, can't forget about Crow and Del Mar. But those, those three or four teams are still a, you know, they're a notch or two below uh, modern day in Harvard. Yeah, you mentioned, of course, the two powerhouses. And uh, for many years, right, modern day was the champion. And then Harvard Westlake has kind of overtaken them. Do you see a, a shift at all there? Is based off what happened this past summer? Is it is it kind of volleyed back to modern day now? I think these teams are going to be really close. Um, you know, modern day has got a couple transfers. Uh, Thomas Dunstan from uh, the East Coast, also a national team player, uh, left center. Um, they've you know they do a very good job of developing players. Um, Luke Wyatt is one of those players this year who's been at modern day for a couple of years now. And has really come on uh, another uh, left-hander who um, who knows really coming on and improved. So you know, modern day uh, they're very focused. They uh, they work real hard, just like Harvard does. So I think it's, it's going to go back and forth all year. But you know, um, I know modern day is very you know I'm sure they're hungry to uh, try to overtake uh, Harvard, who's won the last two Division One titles after modern day had that uh, that dominance. But you know. There's a lot of things happening in front of the cage with uh, with Ben Halleck, uh, the recent Stanford commit, who looked very good in Junior Olympics, kind of raised his level of play. So, you know, if modern day and any defense is not ready and, and, and plays very sound defensively against Ben Halleck, he can really take over a game and change things very quickly. You, you touched on Orange Lutheran, and you also brought up the JOs. Sometimes Junior Olympics uh, can be a, a precursor of what might happen in the high school season at the 16U level. Uh, the Orange Lutheran largely on that on that North Irvine club winning the gold medal there in the highest level. You alluded to them maybe surprising some people. What is so strong about Orange Lutheran this season? Well, they've been, been able to keep these, uh, this core group of players together. Um, they returned pretty much everybody from their last year's team, which uh, made it to the, the Division One first round. So they have, uh, you know, and they have this um, kid I'm pretty uh, high on, um, is Ash Moulton, who's uh, another left-hander. I think is a, uh, a rising star in USA water polo. But they have a, you know, they have a lot of depth. They've gotten a couple of transfers as well, um, that are you know impact guys. And when you're able to keep that core together and build it up, um, you know, they have a chance to uh, to be really good. You know, and, and they're very hungry. They're in a very tough league though, and, and Division One is very tough. You know, it will be interesting. You know, automatically, if they if they do get, you know, for example, you know, projecting if they were to get second in the Trinity League to Modern Day, which has owned that uh, league the last, you know, several years, you know, they'd be on the opposite side of the bracket, uh, most likely with, you know, Harvard. So that will be, you know, that Trinity League uh, is going to be an interesting um, league, just like Harvard League, Harvard League. You know, it all starts, you know, before you talk playoffs, you, you know, you have to wrap up those uh, playoff seats through your league. We're touching heavily on Division One here, looking at some of the other divisions. Foothill winning Division Two last year, Laguna Beach Division Three. When you look at at some of those groups, who do you see as uh, some of the standout squads here going into 2015? Well, I'm very high on Foothill. Uh, veteran coach uh, Jim Brum is back. They're the defending uh, two champions. They've uh, so they're actually going for something pretty interesting. Greg, is they're 
And uh, Foothill's got a, a real nice tradition. Um, a lot of great water polo players that come out of Foothill. Coach Brum does a great job. You know, they got, they're they fed pretty well with that SoCal club. Their Foothill, this year's Foothill team, is trying to become the first at um, Foothill to win. Uh, they're trying to become the, the first time they've been able to repeat uh, CIF titles. So they've never had a repeat um, CIF title at Foothill. So I think there's going to be a strong chance uh, for that. Foothill's ranked number one in the preseason in Division Two. Their main competition could be teams like uh, number two, Dana Hills, uh, number three, Los Osos, uh, number four, San Marcos. Division two is pretty loaded. Coach Brum said he thinks it's pretty stacked. You know, there's some teams uh, down below that are very competitive. So I think that's going to be a very entertaining division. You know, um, Division three, Laguna Beach is going to try to reload. I think it's going to be pretty tough for them. They open, the Breakers open, you know, they're number one in the preseason in division, in division three. But you have teams like Marietta Valley, Montebello, perhaps Capistrano Valley, uh, maybe another sleeper I'd throw out there, maybe Elisa Miguel. Um, watch out, you know, watch those guys out of South County. But I think it's going to be tough for um, Laguna Beach to repeat this year, um, just from uh, you know some early returns from Coach De- uh, Ethan D'Amato says they lost a lot from last year. They had incredible seniors last year. Now, looking at the rest of the divisions, and it, you know, here in the southern section, it goes uh, all the way to seven. And those lower divisions, four through seven, maybe they don't get as much uh, publicity or as much notoriety as as Division One, which I, I know many consider to be the the best high school water polo in the country. But when you look down towards four through seven, who are some teams that are exciting? Maybe some individual athletes that people might want to check out, or 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 could be on the rise in the high school water polo scene. Well, you know, out of Orange County, one team I think is going to be pretty good in, in Division Six uh, is going to be uh, Sinkerstrom. That's actually, and that's the uh, they they uh, they're at the pool where the U.S. national team practices out of uh, Santa Ana. I think they're going to be. They have most of their players back from last year. I think they're going to be very good. You know, another inland team that you know is uh, ranked in Division Five is Claremont. Um, they get a lot of club players, and they've been doing very strong. Um, the last couple of years, so they're the top-ranked team in the preseason, Division Five. Division Four has some pretty regular teams that I I think would be pretty good. Their number, the preseason number ones, Regetti, followed by Cerritos, Crescenta Valley, and El Segundo. Uh, Regetti's been pretty tough the last couple of years, and then uh, Division Seven, the, the number uh, you know, which is a, the lowest division, but plays some good water polo. Um, number one preseason is Rio Mesa. Number two, Don Lugo. And then three, four, San Dimas, Oxnard. So we'll see how that uh, Division Seven uh, works out. All these divisions are, are really loaded, and it, it, it's uh, you know they're all trying to get this year. They want to be playing you know uh, you know about mid-November um, you know in, in Irvine where the championship's going to be at the uh, the World Aquatic Center. That's what these all these guys, these top teams that we're talking about, they're all gearing to try to get to so, Willow. It's going to be uh, you know it's going to be some very competitive couple months of water polo with you know tournaments and some really tough uh, non-league games. A lot of these teams will play up tougher competition in their divisions. So the division guy, division one guys, they'll battle it out against each other all year. You know, Harvard and Harvard modern day might play, you know, four or five times if you include the playoffs. Yeah, those two seem to play quite a bit when you add in the summer of the playoffs, uh, regular season tournaments. I know you have a, a big a big preview coming out. As far as the boys' water polo season, I, I, I don't want to undercut your uh, your sales here at all of these newspapers. But do you uh, do you have a kind of a an early pick for for OC Register Player of the Year, or is that something we have to read about? <laughs> That's a good question, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I was very impressed with uh, you know, uh, Thomas Dunstan. Is, you know, is a newcomer to Orange County, so I haven't seen him play a lot, but he looked really good to me um, uh, during the summer. I saw him, uh, got to spotlight him a little a few times at the state tournament. And um, I think he's going to be—he's uh, going to be very good. You know, like I said, Ash is is, is, a, is a very good player at Orange Lutheran. Um, you know, uh, there's some very good players at Huntington that come out of that Vanguard Club. You know, um, you know, Foothill's got a couple of good players that I really like too. You know, there's a driver there that's pretty exciting, Chaz Warnaker. They have three seniors. Um, you know, so I think he, he's one of those senior captains that are going to be very good. So I think there's a lot of talent, uh, you know, in Orange County. Um, modern day team's pretty pretty loaded um, with with seniors as well. So um, it's going to be a great season. 
I'm looking forward to it. And, um, you know, our preview is going to come out. Um, it'll be in, in the newspaper on Tuesday, and I, I hope the fans check it out. And um, it's something that we, uh, you know, always look forward to, try to pick somebody different, uh, to spotlight a, a team and talk to some players and um, get some water polo players, uh, pictures in the paper. And, uh, and then, of course, we'll be all online on ocmarcy.com. I want to thank Dan Albano for joining us. His big water polo preview will be next Tuesday in the OC Register, so pick that up and also online as well. He is the OC Varsity Guy. You can follow him on Twitter, at OC Varsity Guy. Dan, looking forward to reading your preview, and uh, thanks for your time. I'm sure we'll see you on the pool deck this fall. Thanks, and enjoy all your, uh, your work as well, Craig, and uh, great talking to you.